Second uh, uh, Kings chapter two, very familiar text, verse number nine. And it came to pass when they were gone over that Elijah said unto Elisha, "Ask what I shall do for thee." What if you could make a request like that? Oh, God help me here. To a man like this. Hello? I mean, he's already raised the widow's son. Already shut the heavens up. Called fire down out of heaven. Prayed the rain in after three and a half years of drought and famine. Somebody help me here. Told the widow, the cruise of oil shall not fail, amen, nor the barrel of meal until the Lord sends rain on the earth. Uh Uh, An army of of 50 and a captain came to apprehend him and said, Come with us, man of God. If I'm a man of God, let fire fall down out of heaven and consume thee and thy 50. And it happened. They sent another group after him, and the same thing happened. The third guy that went up there was shaking and trembling, bowing on the earth because he knew the power that God had placed in this man's hand. What if you looked at this man as he was about to be carried off? in a chain of a fire and he said just ask of me what I shall do for you before I be taken away I want to tell you something tonight there's somebody here greater than Elijah that you can ask and it shall be given oh we ought to get real excited about that what's the matter don't we really believe it Oh, Seek and you shall find. Oh, if God will help me here now. I want to preach to you a little while. Amen. On this text here, before I be taken away from thee, and Elijah said, I pray thee, let a double portion come on. Come on, brother. of thy spirit. Boy, I'd like to get a double portion tonight. How about you? Huh? Oh, hallelujah. I looked over at my wife's dessert this afternoon and and seen the pretzels sprinkled all over the top of it. I don't know what you call it. Amen. But I was wanting to go get her seconds before I'd ever even tasted it the first time. I could just tell it was going to be good. Amen. And I'd already ate a piece of cake and a whole plate full of dumplings. Amen. I like going back for seconds. How about you? But I'm here to tell you tonight, brothers and sisters, there's much more than just good cooking going on around here. The Lord has been dealing out a healthy portion to everybody that is hungry, everybody that is willing, everybody that is open. Can I hear an amen? God has been satisfying the hungry. I like that one scripture where God said, open thy mouth wide and I will feel it. Can I hear an amen? I just feel like opening my mouth wide tonight. I just feel like opening my heart wide tonight. My body may be weary, but my heart feels on fire. My body may feel tired, but my soul feels hungry. Can I hear an amen? I've got room somewhere in the cold for one more bite of a blessing from God. I've got to, I've got room somewhere down in the bottom of my heart for one more drink to my Holy Ghost fountain tonight. I'd like to get a double portion. Oh, oh, God, help me to preach to your people here tonight. Huh? You know, I, I read this story. And you help me here. I, I may lay a, little, lay a little groundwork here. Because I feel like i got some things to say. But hang with me here. Amen. If I gear down just a little bit, don't jump off the train, all right? Amen here. Amen. You know, these, 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 these men in this story move me. They really do. One of them inspires me. But, but in the midst of his... Well, they both inspire me. They, they both inspire me. But one of them overwhelms me. You ever, you ever been overwhelmed by somebody that had such a touch of God on their life? Huh? That, 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 that's, that's what Elijah is. He's, he's the overwhelming kind of, kind of preacher. He's the overwhelming kind of minister. 
He's the over. He's the guy that stands up and points his finger in the face of the nation. He points his finger in the face of Ahab. Ahab meets him after three and a half years of drought and says, there's the one that troubles Israel. He doesn't shake. He doesn't wince. He doesn't flinch. He hurls the accusation right back at him. No, you are the one that troubles Israel. It's not because of me that Israel is facing what they're facing, but it's because of you and your wife Jezebel that we're going through this drought. And this famine, this was predicted in the Word of God. This was prayed by Solomon of old. This was told to us, amen, in the covenant that God made with His people. That if they forsook me, I would withhold the rain from heaven. Somebody help me preach here tonight. It's all because of you, says this Elijah. Oh, I'm trying to preach to you. Pray for me. I don't preach too long here tonight. I, re- I, really, don't, I really don't feel like I'm going to. Amen. But I've, I've just got some stuff on my heart. If God will help me get it off here the way He wants it to. What a man of God. Huh? What? What? You know, a- Adam Clark said there's a legend about Elijah that, that he really wasn't a man. He was just an angel. In human form. Well, I don't believe that. And Adam Clark didn't believe that. He just said there was a legend that said that. But I'm going to tell you what. If there wasn't for two passages of Scripture, I'd be tempted to believe it. But God lets me see a scene that nobody else saw except God and Elijah. He lets me see Elijah all alone out under the juniper Come on here. Tree discouraged and dejected, praying to die. Do you know the public eye never saw that? Every time they saw Elijah, he was burning. He comes flaming into history, and he goes flaming out of history. He's always standing up, a man with the power of God, right at his fingertips. It seems he's got the heavens under his control. It's because he's under heaven's control. Can I hear an amen? here tonight. Oh, what power. Amen. What boldness this man has. James just flat out tells us Elias was a man. He's the only man in the Bible I know of that God had to tell us. He's just a man. Amen. He is a man. He was subject to light passion as you are. Don't get overwhelmed by him. Don't get discouraged by him. There have been some men that seem to have such a touch of God on their life. When I heard them pray, when I seen them preach, when I seen God move in their ministry, I literally almost got discouraged to think, my God, is there anything that I can do for you? And that's where this other guy comes in. He's the one that encourages me. I don't know who Elijah's daddy is. I don't know who his mama is. I don't know where he came from. He's a Tishbite, wherever Tishbe is. Hallelujah. Amen. He goes off in a chariot of fire, shows up centuries later on the top of the Mount of Transfiguration with Moses. Can I hear an amen? He stands on a level, amen, that Moses and Jesus and he, Elijah, alone stood on. Oh, God, help me preach here. Amen. God had to make a distinction there. Peter said, let us build three tabernacles, one for you, one for Moses, one for for Elias and a voice from heaven. Amen. Said, This is my beloved son. Hear him. And they saw no man say Jesus only. Somebody help me preach here. He is it. He's greater than Moses. He's greater than Elijah. But oh, what a man this man Elijah was. But here comes a little servant by the name of Elisha. Oh, God, help me here. And he has the audacity to pray. When given such a request, let me, I pray thee. Let me, let me, just, let me just clear something up here. Since we've got plenty of time here. 
let me, let me, let me just clear. And I'm, I'm, I'm not going to take long, really. I'm not. I really am not. Don't get nervous here tonight. But let me just clear something up here tonight. Elisha did not get twice as much as Elijah. Oh, that's right. I, you know, I, 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 some could probably argue that he may not even got half as much. Oh, you're listening. You're real quiet now. Huh? Listen to me. If there was no Elijah, there had never been an Elisha. If I understand the Scripture correctly, Malachi prophesied of a time that Elijah is going to return. Can I hear an amen? I don't know how all those details are going to work out. Jesus said of John the Baptist, if you would receive it, Elias has come already. Can I hear an amen here tonight? But there is an Elijah ministry, amen, that has not stopped. Somebody help me preach here tonight. It is still going on. I said, well, Elisha worked twice as many miracles as Elijah did. I beg to differ with that. Oh, God, help me preach here. I don't mean cross your theology up here tonight. But there are nine miracles that Elijah worked. There are 16 miracles that Elisha worked. Amen. Oh, God, help me to preach here tonight. Uh, and, and let me say this here tonight. We don't know that that's all the miracles either of them work. Just because that's all we have a record of, I think we're missing something here when we say He got twice the miracles that Elijah got and we stop right there. That's not what this is about. He didn't say, I want twice as much. That's not what he prayed for. He said, I want a double portion. Kind of like that father you preached about this morning that divided the portion of his goods to one son and to another side to another son. He said, I want a double portion. I don't want a single portion. I want a double portion. I want twice as much as what I might rightly obtain. I want to get everything I can from you while you're still here. Oh, I wish I could preach to you tonight. What is this? What is this double portion? Amen. We've talked about what it's not. What is it? You know what it is? It's a special portion. You know, you know there was a law in Israel that when the father divided the portion of his inheritance among his sons, no matter how many sons he had, he would evidently give them an equal portion. But there was a law in Israel that the firstborn, Got a double portion. You give him twice as much as you give the rest. I feel God here tonight. You know, I think God would like to do for some of us in this building here tonight. I think He'd like to give us a special portion. I don't think God wants to treat us average tonight. I think God wants to treat us special. Can I hear an amen? Now Jesus is the firstborn, but He's among many brethren. Can I hear an amen? And the Bible tells us amen, that we can partake of that inheritance, hallelujah, that He has obtained from the Lord. What's He got? God said, all power. That's what Jesus said is given unto me in heaven and in her and he dispatches it amen to those of us that are hungry for it hey God wants to do something special for you I sure would like to see somebody get the Holy Ghost tonight Lift your hands right now and ask God to help us. Listen to me now, brothers and sisters. I'm going to tell you why Elijah got a double portion. Because he had a double desire. You know, he wasn't the first man to have this possibility in his life. I read about another servant that Elijah had. 
And when he got discouraged and went under the juniper tree, amen, that servant did not follow him from that point on. Oh, God help me here. Now, there's something about Elijah here. You know, he'd get into a, a state of mind that he just kind of wanted to be alone and just leave his servant uh, aside there. And so one day, he does that to Elisha too. The Lord, there at Gilgal, the Lord has sent me down to Bethel. Now, you just stay right here. I, 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 you, you've come far enough. You've served me well. And, and uh, when I'm gone from here, then the Lord can do something through you. I, I appreciate appreciate everything you've done. I've got a special thing that's going to happen today. And, and you just stay right here. Amen. The Lord has sent me to Bethel. Not on your life. I'm going with you from Gilgal down to Bethel. As the Lord liveth and as thy soul liveth, I'm going with you down there. Are you willing to follow? Are you determined to go the distance to get the blessing? We can have two altar calls in one service. Come on now. I'm willing to go all the way, Lord. Are we? Just stay there, then. Just stay there. Come on, man. Who wants to go to bed? I'll give you one more chance. Who wants to go to Bethel? God, help me here tonight. Come here, buddy. Come here, brother. Hallelujah. Amen. Ha. Oh, don't you appreciate this brother here tonight? Amen. They no sooner. I, really, he needs to be Elijah, and I need to be Elisha. God help me here tonight. They no sooner get down, amen, to Bethel, that Elijah says unto him, The Lord has sent me to Jericho. <laughs> you know, now, now if, if we don't look at a map, we don't really get what's going on here. You know where Jericho is? It's back down next to Gilgal. That's where we just came from. We were at Gilgal. And he said, I'm going to Bethel. And so here they go. I've got me a good guy here helping me here tonight. Here they go down to Bethel. Here we are at Bethel. No sooner do they get down to Bethel, the man of God says, okay, now let's go back to Jericho. What's wrong with you? You've missed it this time, preacher. You should have stayed right there or stayed right there, Juan. You ain't being led of God or you wouldn't be going back and forth like this all the time. Hey, you're, you're the one that's about to miss it. Can I hear an amen? If God's says go back to Jericho after you've just been a few miles away then brothers and sisters you need to go back to Jericho some of us need to visit our first experience some of us need to visit amen yesterday when the Lord did a wonderful work in our life a year or two ago hey we need to go back and remember and get some faith for God to do something else for us again Are, 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 are you willing to follow? Are you willing to do what God says even when you don't understand? Hello? 
You know, you know, we used to we used to have churches where where God dealt with folks' hearts, and and you didn't have to preach a five point sermon on some issue for them to lay it down and get closer to God. Now you can preach five five point sermons on it, and they're still thinking about it and saying God hadn't dealt with me about it, and it's plain as it can be in the Word of God. Hey, hey, I need somebody, Amen, who's willing to go the distance. That's the one that's going to get a double portion. You just stay down there, Gilgal, and keep your single portion if you want to. But I'm looking for somebody that wants a double portion. Still want to go? The Lord has sent me across Jordan. Don't you know that the Lord's going to take your master from your head today? Hold your peace. Don't talk to me about that. That's not what I've got in view. Oh, God, help me here tonight. You know, you know, what God did for a whole generation, He's willing to do for just one person here tonight. He didn't divide Jordan for Elijah. He was getting ready to leave. <laughs> this wasn't doing anything for Elijah. No, that wasn't for his benefit. It was for Elijah. <laughs> Somebody help me here tonight. What he had done for a whole generation in Joshua's time, he's doing for one who's hungry right now in his day. Hey, I'm going to tell you what. We've heard a lot about the revivals of yesterday, but I want to tell you what the God of yesterday is still the God of today. And what he did in 1920 and 1930 and 1940 and 1950 and 1960 and 1970 and 1980 and 1990. He's still doing it in 2003. He'll do it for you. The stories of a past generation can be your own personal story. You can have your own upper room. You can have your own Pentecost. You can get it to math for you. How many's ever felt it before? First time I felt it, I was a 12-year-old boy. I got saved when I was seven, called the priest that same night. But the first time I felt the Holy Ghost get a hold of me and shake me, I was a 12-year-old boy at Barberville Youth Camp. Oh, hallelujah. I didn't get the Holy Ghost until seven years later, but I became a holy roller that night. Are you hearing me here? Oh, how many ever felt His holy touch? If I, oh, oh, God, help me here. If I, if I can preach to you about two more minutes, if God will help me here. Hey, man, that's about all I think I'm going to do. Oh, my, 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 my. You're Elijah. He made a good Elisha. We'll let him be Elijah now. You know, you know Elisha's out there plowing. Twelve yoke of oxen. His mind's on his inheritance. He's a, a, probably the eldest son of his daddy. He's not a lazy man. Twelve yoke of oxen are out there, and he's plowing with one of those yoke. Hallelujah. Out here, you know that's who God gets is somebody that's doing something where they're at. 
I feel the Holy Ghost here tonight. And while he's there, Elijah comes and he don't even stop. He just walks right on by him. But as he walks on by him, he casts that mantle on him. Cast that mantle on me here, Elijah. And he walks on by. <laughs> Uh, uh, and he runs after him. That's how I know he kept walking. Because the Bible said he ran after him. And he grabs a hold of him. Wait just a minute here. Wait just a minute here. Let me go tell my mama goodbye. Let me go kiss her goodbye. Let me tell my daddy goodbye. Let me burn my plow. Let me kill my oxen. And I'll be right back. What I felt right here is worth more than anything that I've got hopes of inheriting in my father's house. I'll gladly trade all this and all this inheritance to have another touch of what I've just felt. Some say, some say it was around 10 years that Elisha served Elijah. It was a good while, however long it was. He wasn't preaching. He wasn't singing. He wasn't prophesying. Just pouring water on the hands of the man of God. But one day, what do you want? The Lord's getting ready to take me. <laughs> Double. Two. Second. <laughs> I've done had one portion. I've done had one taste. And oh, it's burned in my soul ever since I felt what I did out in that field where I left it all. Amen. Because of the foretaste that I had so many days ago, there's only one thing I want. I want some more of what I've already felt. I want some more of what I've already tasted. Ah! Ah! It was a good taste, but I want the whole picture. I want the whole pile. I want the whole kettle. Do it again! Let it happen again! Hey, Lord! Do it again! And do it so much more! Touch somebody again! And touch them so much more! Lift your hands all across this building here tonight. I believe if I need the Holy Ghost, I'd get out of my pew right now. 
And I'd get up to this altar as quick as I could. And I'd throw my hands up and my head back and my heart open. And I'd believe God. I believe God. I believe God was willing to do it for me. Oh, you believed a lie from the devil long enough. Why don't you believe God tonight and leave this place baptized with the Holy Ghost and fire? They've walked through dry and barren places And my soul has felt no rain for a while I believe in the widow's empty barrel For she had faith enough to bring a vast supply Another empty vessel till it Lord another time. Now at the multitude that day they came together down by the Sea of Galilee. They all did be Lord, but I believe that I'm like those little. And just one touch would multiply the very least. Really, Lord, another time. As my feet, they've walked through dry and barren places. Oh, in my soul, it's felt no rain. Oh, come on. Come on, you've got down to Bethel. Now, oh, come on. Go on to Jericho. Believe God tonight. Believe God tonight. Says he'll give the Holy Ghost to them that ask. Oh, believe in God. It's the Father's good pleasure to give you a kingdom. Another wave of glory. Oh, I need the fresh touch. You have promised he can be mine. So Paul. Go on, don't worry about it. Don't worry about what you look like or what you sound like. Or what anybody else is thinking, just make your mind up. 
the multitude that day they came together down by the sea of Galilee they all did feast Lord and I believe in those little loans and fishes because just